Hey everyone, thanks for joining me and uh, listen, um, today, well, we're going to get to look at some things that uh, can rock your world if you don't know the Bible and you don't understand what the Bible says is coming, as we're going to be looking at Earth's darkest hour, a, a, a time of darkness, destruction, anger, and judgment looms over the earth. Joel chapter 2 describes the darkness for the day of the Lord is coming, for it is a hand, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Wow. Joel chapter 1 verse 15 warns of destruction, alas, for the day. For the day of the Lord is a hand, it shall come as destruction from the Almighty. Romans chapter 2. And the NLT says a, a, a day of anger is coming instead of anger, or other translations say wrath. Well, whose wrath? God's wrath. His anger has been long time coming. And that slowness gives some people the wrong impression. They, they hear that God is good, and that is true, that God is neither cruel nor mean. He is gracious and kind. At least five times the Bible describes God as slow to anger. In fact, in Ecclesiastes chapter 8, the Bible lets us know that because judgment doesn't come speedily, men do whatever they want. Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 17 says, You are God, ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abundant in kindness. And in Psalm 145 verse 8, the psalmist wrote, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. In Joel chapter 2, Joel pleads, return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. Nahum similarly describes uh, to us that God is slow to anger, but that verse also gives us a powerful warning to all who view his reluctance to unleash wrath as their license to sin. The Lord is slow to anger, he wrote, and great in power, and he will not acquit all the wicked. Uh, don't confuse God's silence with approval. Second Peter chapter 3 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, with some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, but the day of the Lord will come. Do not let his long-suffering confuse you. He will eventually unleash wrath upon the world and its people. In my mind, I can hear someone uh, saying, that's not the God I serve. If that's not the God that you serve, then you do not serve the God of the Bible. I know that's hard to hear for many people, but why do you think that Jesus died on the cross? Because God gave us the ability to make real choices, and real choices have real consequences, and the true and living God promises anger and judgment on the world and those of its people who refuse to repent and receive Christ's free gift of salvation from wrath. The day of the Lord is a phrase that refers to a future time period containing a specific series of events. It's also called the day of Jehovah or Yahweh. Uh, that day, that great day, uh, we find it throughout the Bible more than 75 times in the Old Testament alone and many times in the New Testament. All these references contain the element of judgment. Uh, listen, there's many people out there that say, well, the God of the Old Testament, he was a judge, but I like the God of the New Testament. They picture Jesus just has a lamb on his shoulder. I saw the picture somewhere. They forget that both the Old Testament and New Testament speak of judgment. All of these references, Old Testament and New Testament, they contain the element of judgment, the judgment of Israel and of other nations, judgment of individuals and of the human race. But in all those scriptures, you never find this, the day of the Lord described as a time of judgment of the church or individual followers of Jesus. <clears throat> Why is that? Because of the trust in Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. So we're not appointed to the day of the Lord. Let's go a little bit further. The King James Version begins its translation of Isaiah chapter 13 with the words we don't often hear, How, howl ye. Uh, that is the sound of pain in a raw primal sense. Howl, like you, know, you think of a, a dog that's howling or a coyote that's howling or something like that. 
It says, howl ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The New King James says, wail, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It will come as destruction from the Almighty. Therefore, all hands will be limp. Every man's heart will melt, and they will be afraid. Listen, as you can see, the day of the Lord will be a horrible time for those who must endure it. Isaiah chapter 13 lets us know that the darkness described will not just be metaphorical. Uh, Part of that day will be a time of literal physical darkness. Behold, the day of the Lord comes cruel with both wrath and fierce anger to lay the land desolate, and he will destroy its sinners from it. For the stars of heaven and their constellations will not give their light. The sun will be darkened and it's going forth and the moon will not cause its light to shine. Wow. Listen, what's coming in this day of the Lord is not pleasant. Isaiah chapter 34 verse 8 and Jeremiah 46 call it a day of vengeance. Lamentation calls it the day of the Lord's anger. Joel chapter 2 says, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord is coming. So when will the day of the Lord come? In his, listen, everybody wants to know that, right? If it's coming, when? In his classic eschatological book, Things to Come, Dwight Pentecost wrote, the term day of the Lord or that day is not a term which applies to a 24-hour period, but rather the whole program of events, including the tribulation period, the second advent program, and the entire millennial age. Uh, We recently looked at Daniel's 70th week, also called uh, the tribulation or the the, uh, uh, day of Jacob's trouble. And that begins with the covenant of Antichrist, but the day of the Lord begins either at the same time or shortly before this. Both both Daniel and, and Jesus speak of an awful change at the halfway point of the seven years. And in Matthew chapter 24, verses 15 through 18, Jesus showed how severe this moment in history will be. He said, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. He was speaking to tribulation era believers living in the region of Jerusalem. He said that when Antichrist does this egregious thing in the temple, get out of there and get out quick. If you're out in the field, don't even go back home to pack a bag just flee. He said, flee to the mountains. Despite the fact that none of the online dictionaries I could find made the connection, I'm sure this is where we get the English phrases, uh, make for the hills and head for the hills. Uh, For then there will be time of great tribulation, Jesus said, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no nor ever shall be. Listen, I could go on and on about the day of the Lord and all the different descriptions, but you get the idea, right? Listen, you don't wanna be here for it. God promises judgment for sin that is going to come upon the planet. This is what I would implore you to do if you haven't done it, is trust Christ for the forgiveness of your sin. He came the first time that we would be forgiven. And all those who were in Christ Jesus before the day of the Lord begins will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. You can check out uh, my recent message I did on that on one of my uh, midweeks. This will happen. I'm talking about the rapture, being caught up the great harpazo. Listen, the judgment that's coming, the day of the Lord, is God's wrath upon this planet. Listen, I implore you, if you haven't done so, trust in Christ for the forgiveness of your sin. Because the Bible says there's no other name under heaven by which we can be forgiven. And God is so gracious and so kind that God the Father sent God the Son to die for the sins of anyone who would believe in him. He took our wrath upon himself so we wouldn't have the wrath of God's judgment. There is no other name under heaven by which a person can be saved. Trust in Christ for the forgiveness of your sin. Listen, I implore you, I encourage you, because for all those who are in Christ, there is great hope. But for those who don't know Christ, what is coming 
is most horrific. Listen, trust in Christ. Pray for those that don't know Christ, that, that you know, that they would be forgiven. God bless you guys. I'm Noah, and I'd like to let you know about some of the exciting things happening at Hope For Our Times. We just opened our online store at HopeForOurTimes.com. We're excited to offer many resources that are aimed at bringing hope to a hopeless world. We have books, videos, and apparel available right now. We're adding new resources constantly, so be sure to check the store frequently. Pastor Tom will be speaking at the Imminent Return Prophecy Summit in Norman, Oklahoma, October 5th through the 8th. This conference will feature over 20 of the world's top Bible prophecy teachers proclaiming the Word of God. To sign up for the live stream, visit HopeForOurTimes.com and click on the Events tab. Have you downloaded the Hope For Our Times app? It's a great tool that is updated daily with current news articles and special app-only videos. There is also a Bible reading plan that is built in. Visit the App Store or the Google Play Store to download this free resource. Remember to tell someone about the hope that comes through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ.